What's going on guys? Logan JYA here and the Dry Kage is back, baby. We've got Dry Trons for October 2021. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. we got combos and test hands at the end of the video. And come play in our free weekly tournaments on twitch.tv slash loganjya and join our Discord for more information. I don't want to preface this too much. Dry Trons, still the best deck, baby. We didn't get hit at all. Don't tell Trip I said that, alright? Here we go. Let's get into it. <laughs> What's going on guys? Logan JYA here, the Dry Kage back at it again. We've got a fresh Drytron deck profile for the October 2021 format. This deck is almost definitely the best deck right now, but we're ready for the other contenders. Eva to one did absolutely nothing. I'm going to show you why. Don't forget to stick around till the end of the video so you can actually see a combo tutorial and test hand to really get a feel for this new build. It's a little different than what we've done in the past, but other people have definitely done it before us. We're just adapting it now for the current meta. So anyway, without further ado, let's hop into the deck list. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let's get into it. All right, starting things off, guys. First cards are obvious, and we're going to run through them real quick. Triple Moy Beta Fa. Am I stupid? Triple Alpha Thuban. Triple of the Zeta, that hasn't changed. You guys still know my golden ratios. Double Gamma and Double Delta, that has not changed and most likely will not change. Even going into the new format, I think this is the right amount of names. Let's move on to our Ritual Monsters. From here, we've got the one Ben 10, of course. The one Ida 10, yup. The one Natasha. Now, uh, I was thinking about cutting this. This card was very close to getting cut in this build. But here's the thing. When you see our extra deck, you'll see why we kept this in, and I'll explain the reasoning. It's kind of important to hold this in hand for your potential follow-up. And then finally, that's right, we caved. We're going to the perfection build again, guys. I didn't think we'd be doing this, but we're back at it again. So, Herald of Perfection is back in here. Ultimate, this is out for now. For now. Moving on, obvious stuff, triple diviner, no explanation needed there, your best normal summon. We are down to two orange light and the one Eva. I used to rail against this ratio, but right now this is correct. I really do believe that this is correct. Our build is coming in, clocking in with a few more cards. It's even less likely for you to open up a triple or um, an orange light with a fairy nowadays. Uh, we are playing 44 if I'm correct. So we cut down the ratios in order to uh, favor other slots. And we are still playing Dragoon. Dragoon is amazing. Why would we not play this card? It's your going second strategy. It's your get hand trap still play strategy. Clear boards win the game strategy. We play it. We play it. Moving on from there. Spell cards, baby. Triple Nova. No explanation needed. One Medionis Drytron. You don't need two. One is enough. We're also playing another ritual spell. Spoiler alert. Moving on from there, triple Cyber Emergency. Gotta play this, maximize consistency. Here we go, time to go off the rails. Shout out to GrimYGO, my man, the team captain. Um, I think this was in uh, one of his tournaments that we saw this build, or it might've been him himself playing it. Uh, triple Preparation of Rights and triple of the Pre-Preparation of Rights. This is also very similar to what Pac did way back in the day when the new support first came out. Uh, lot, lots of different people have tried this out, and right now I think this is the way to do it. I'm still trying to master this particular build. I've always been a fan of the Double Eva Ultimateness build, but you play more conservatively. And I think the players that really mastered this variant are going to have a bit of an edge going into the new format. But this build, I think, is going to be the way to play Drytron. And of course, to go with the pre prep, we play the Dawn of the Herald to search uh, this and the Perfection for free. It's basically Pot of Greed, it's a free plus one. Going second cards, we're doing triple Dark Ruler no more and double Droplets. Now let me explain the reasoning why here, okay? We don't inherently play a lot of going second cards. The ones that we are main decking right now are ones you can rip off the top and have a high impact. They can be the six card. When you're playing a deck, like a two card combo deck, you really have to think about your whole six card hand as it is what it is, and you have to play with those six cards. Thinking about it like five, and like you don't want to dead draw like a droll or a hand trap that does nothing when you're going second. You really need those maximum impact cards. And the biggest threats of this format are still going to be Tri Brigade, which are still going to be summoning Apollosa, and we have to deal with that, or we have to deal with the, the Revolt and the um, what's his name, the Shurag play. So Droplets helps deal with that. Winda is also going to be a very real threat. And, threat. and Vogue Dogmatica did not get touched. That deck is going to be a serious threat, so we got to be ready for that. Uh, final spells, uh, one of's called by, 
Foolish Burial, and finally the Red Eyes Fusion to round out the main deck. I, like I said, I believe this is 44 cards we're clocking in at, so it's a bit much for me, but it works. It works. Let's move on to the extra deck, and we'll wrap things up with a side deck. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly, so we have time for combos and stuff. Two Moy Beta Fafnirs, that hasn't changed, never will. We're doing the one Downard Magician for the Zeus play. I think this is ideal still. However, there's been a lot of times where I miss, miss the Lyra Lusk. A lot of times where I miss Fuko. Right now, I think this is the way we kind of have to do it. Uh, moving on from there, the one Beatrice. Uh, essential. And then the one Zeus. I would absolutely argue that this is a thousand percent essential. Moving on from there, we're going into Link Monsters. We've got Link Haribo. We've got Verte. Going to Dragoon, duh. We've got IP, uh, our, our crazy end boards, and on this, plus this, plus like a six negate herald, it's, it's, it's insane, just saying. Uh, one phoenix, one unicorn, one boral sword, to clean out games, of course, and Apollosa. We put Apollosa back in. Now, hear me out on those hands that are either just so-so, or you have the IP to tag out, or you have to use your Eva Send on the opponent's turn, you didn't get to search it, you can't maximize your court economy. Being able to tag out that IP into the Apo can actually be pretty game-ending. There's also times where you might want to summon it on the first turn, or you might want to protect a combo line. A lot of situations where the Apollosa can come up, so we've put it back into the build. Apo is back, baby. That is it for the Link Monsters. Let's finish this up. We've got the one Herald of the Arc Light. So this is a change that I've made. I used to play this card at two. I've played this at two for the longest time. We're back on one, and that's why I mentioned it's important to, if possible, hold the Natasha in hand. Unless it's the game ending negate, hold that Natasha so you can play out of your graveyard by tributing it. It it's it actually does come up. So, but we wanted to make extra room. Specifically, we cut um, one of these for the Avalosa. Moving on from there, the Entis for board breaking possibilities. Of course, uh, it's essential. And then finally, the Dragoon, which is essential with the Dragoon package. The whole list changes if you don't play the Dragoon package, I'll tell you that right now. Let's go into the side deck and wrap things up. We do have some cool content in the side deck, things you've seen before, whether you've watched our side deck tips videos, things like that. Here we go, let's get into it. We've got triple copies of the Droll and Lockbird for the Mirror Match. Mirror Match is going to be one of your biggest threats. Also does double duty because it hits the Dragon Link, yada, yada, yada. And the Pendulums, gotta fear the Pendulum. Shout out to my boy Triff. This card poops on that deck, all right? Come on, so we gotta be ready for that. Moving on from there, we got Triple Artifact Lancia, okay? Hear me out here, hear me out. Uh, this may sound a little bit silly, and I get it, there's other cards like Contact C that might be more high impact, but we have to be um, a bit more wide reaching with our side deck. I'm just gonna put it that way. High impact cards, wide reaching in archetypal, those are the key words. Fairy in archetypal. You can bring in one going first, and there's a chance you'll be able to search it, especially if you get interrupted, you can just use your Ben 10 to grab this, maybe still make a Dragoon. Lancia plus Dragoon is probably going to put you in a really good place against Tri Brigade. Uh, I don't know how many of them are still going to be playing the Zoo package. You actually have a lot less to fear with them going for the Zeus play. Uh, Lancia, and I really can't stress this enough, this also puts in the double duty against the Virtual Worlds, which is going to be a very serious threat I am predicting for this format. So that's why we're playing the Lancias. Moving on from there, we've got Triple of the Mystic Mine. Uh, I think I talked about this one in a previous video. Mystic Mine can actually be a win con on its own, of course, or it's very, very phenomenal to just slow down the game state, and it's really, really good against Tri Brigade. It invalidates the uh, trap card. It, it, it puts in a lot of work, so we are back on playing Mystic Mine. The last cards in our side deck are actually just back row blowouts. I'll tell you that right now. We've got the one Red Reboot, the one Harpy's Feather Duster, the one Lightning Storm, so I guess this one's Monster and Spawn Trap Blowout, but you know what I mean. And then Triple Twin, okay? So we have to be ready for any and all back row scenarios, strategies, stun cards, Imperial Order, Anti-Spell Fragrance, all those shenanigans. Say no. Just say no. It might look like we're oversiding for matchups like Tri Brigade, but that, like I said, that deck is going to be a serious threat. And I also want to uh, mention the fact that uh, you have seven free side-out slots. That's one thing I do love about this deck, and that's another thing that uh, GrimYGO Andrew taught me, is that you can just take out the preps, the pre-preps, and the Dawn of the Herald, that's seven free side-out slots to side in high-impact cards. So you take a hit on consistency, yes you do, but you still have a fully capable Drytron deck lying back, so you're, you're pretty much chilling. Anyway guys, that's it for the profile, let's get into the combos. Alright guys, so the first combo tutorial we're going to do is the Nibiru Proof combo. Just going to keep it plain and simple for you, we're going to do it with Zeta, Alpha, and anyone fairy in hand. This can be a piece of your main combo line, or it could be the Natasha, it doesn't matter what it is, it's going to keep you safe from 
Nibiru. There's also another variation of the way we can do it, and I'll mention to it when we get to it, but there is... Uh, this is a pretty essential combo to know to play. Maximum safety. I think Nibiru is going to be pretty big this format, so it's best to be able to play around it. It's what makes the good Drytron players from the bad Drytron players. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so the anti-Nibiru combo, you're going to go Alpha, pitch Zeta. Alpha effect searches you the Ben 10. Zeta pitches the Ben 10 to add the Medionis. Ben 10 effect is then going to search you your first copy of Orange Light. Now you're officially safe from Nibiru. It was that simple. The reason why I like doing it this way compared to the other way is that this actually uh, protects you from other hand traps as well. Um, if need be, if there's anything high impact that would completely inhibit your combo, you can Orange Light from this point going forward. So I like this one a little bit better, but the other alternative alternative route is that you search the perfection early and you make that one of your first ritual summons and then you uh, recycle from there. You actually make, you end up making your Beatrice with your Ben 10. So it's it's a little interesting. You kind of skip the Ida 10 step, but uh, this is the way that I prefer to do it. Next step, of course, we're just going to finish up the whole board so you can see what it looks like, but we are officially safe. You go Moiveta Fafnir effect. This is going to Foolish Burial your Gamma to the grave, like so. You activate the Medionis, detaching one, summon back the Ben 10 here. Use the Gamma effect in Grave, pitch off that Ben 10, special summon, bring back Zeta, triggering the Ben 10 effect. Now you get yourself the Diviner, a little bit later than usual, but it still gets the job done. You then normal summon the Diviner, Diviner effect will send the copy of Herald from the extra deck, like so. Herald will then search, grabbing you the copy of Ida 10. At this point, we are going to reduce any one of our Drytrons. I just like to do the Gamma, reduce the Gamma, add this back to hand, use it again, detach to special summon out the Ida 10. It's important that we do Ida 10 here so we still get another ritual summon afterwards. Then we get to add this back to our hand, overlay these two, summon the Beatrice over here. It doesn't really matter what zone you put it in, I'm just putting it on the far right. Beatrice effect is then going to detach, it doesn't matter which one here, I'm going to detach the Ida 10 and we actually Foolish Burial the uh, Perfection here. So we send that off of the Beatrice, activate the Medionis, we're going to send that Moibeta Fafnir, summon back that Perfection, and then we can take this board one step even further beyond, link these two off. You have two options here, you can go for the IP for the tag out into the um, the unicorn on the opponent's turn, or if something happens to your perfection, whatever, you can go for the, um, the, the Apollosa, or we'll take it one step even further beyond, you can go for Verite, use Verite effect, pay 2k, go away, summon Dragoon. Now here's the thing, you still have two cards in hand that we didn't even touch, didn't even consider, that become fodder for your Dragoon. They could literally be two bricks, they could be whatever, you can still play. But more often times than not, they're going to be playable cards. Summon out that Dragoon over here. Zones are pretty well nicely done. And then on the opponent's draw phase, we activate the Beatrice effect. Send the one copy of Eva. Boom, like so. Banishing one, two, like that. And then we fetch ourselves the second copy of the Orange and the Diviner. I said that in the wrong order, but you get the idea. So this puts us in a super well set up place where even if we get Dark Ruler, we still have the double setup with the Herald of the Orange Light ready to rock and roll. And don't forget that we have two extra cards in hand to use for our Dragoon Negates. Boom, full board, Nibiru proof, hand trap proof after the summon of the Zeta. You're really looking good. Let's get into a test hand. Okay guys, time to wrap up this video with a quick test hand to show you what the deck does with full five cards. So without further ado, let's get into it. Give it a quick half cut and let's rock and roll. Eva, <laughs> Red Eyes, Dark Magician, Cyber Emergency, and Preparation of Rights. I tell you what, this hand is absolute garbage, but we're still going to full combo with it, baby, alright? Let's do it. Start things off with the Preparation of Rights. Grab ourselves the Ben 10. I'm just laughing, like I swear I didn't I didn't do nothing. This is just exactly how it ended up. Emergency at Zeta. Zeta effect, pitch Ben 10. Grab Medionis. Ben 10 effect will add Diviner here. Next normal summon diviner, diviner effect. And foolish burial. Sending the Herald of the Arc Light. Arc light effect will search, add I to 10. We gotta do this in a little bit of a funky way, but we'll still get there. Medionis Drytron will summon back the Ben 10, like so. Overlay these two to special summon out Beatrice. Beatrice will detach the Ben 10, the Gamma, from deck to grave. We'll then use Gamma's effect, sending I to 10 to special summon itself, and the Zeta we used earlier. Overlay these two, 
summon out Moi Beta Fafnir, Moi Beta effect. Here we'll send Alpha, like so. Next we'll reduce Moi Beta to add back Medionis. Activate Medionis, detach. Special summoning back Ida 10, has to be Ida 10 here so we get another summon. Ida 10 will add back that Medionis and then we use Alpha effect, tributing the Ida 10 to special summon itself and search out our ultimateness, or excuse me, our perfection. Force of habit, guys, force of habit, still getting used to it. <laughs> Next, we will activate Medionis, detaching one to special summon out the perfection. Then we can link two for Verte on top, pay 2,000 to summon our Dragoon. If we so desire, in this situation, it might be better to go for the darn uh, IP because we opened these two, so we have two options, right? We can go for Dragoon over here, or we can pretend that didn't happen, leave those in the hand and that in the deck, and kind of, you know, sleep on the information that we just bricked super hard and summon IP on top. Now, this isn't the greatest. It's only uh, three Omni Negates plus the interruption offered by the IP Mask Arena. We get to send our uh, last missing name with Beatrice on the opponent's turn. But hey, it is still full combo, okay? Still full combo, and we opened up both Red Eyes and Dark Magician, so I think that's commendable. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for this video. Don't forget to leave a like, uh, comment down below what you think, if there's anything you think we could be doing better. Love to hear your feedback, and that's it. Dry Kage, Logan JYA, signing off. Have a great day. <laughs>